uh, Desatnov is an agent um, that's been on the market since, uh, has been on the formulary that physicians could prescribe in the US since uh, 2006. So there, it's been around for a long time as a formulary drug. It's used to treat uh, lymphomas and leukemias. And it acts in lymphomas and leukemias that are producing bad things the way that senescent cells do by disabling their defenses against the bad things they're producing. So, um, you know, senescent cells in many respects are like cancer cells that don't divide. And so it just turned out when we did our search based on the SCAT network that desatinib was a key that fit in the law quite well for some of these SCAT pathways for particular kinds of senescent cells, mainly, mainly uh, uh, senescent cells in fat tissue and some others. It, we predicted it would not work on other senescent cells like cells that line blood vessels, and it didn't. So we were able to predict that bioinformatically uh, back in 2013 when we first uh, developed the strategy. Kersetin is uh, a natural product. Um, it's in apple peels. It's what makes apple apples taste bitter. Uh, and it targets a number of uh, pathways that are complementary to what the satinib targets. So the combination gives a broad spread of targets on these uh, on the SCAT network. And both drugs have short elimination half-lives. Desatinib is an elimination half-life in humans of around four hours and carcetin around 11 hours. So the desatinib is completely gone from a person's body after around three half-lives, in other words, 12 hours. Carcetin is gone by about 36 hours. So again, we can give these drugs in a hit and run fashion and they're gone and they're not hanging around anymore uh, to cause problems because of their presence. You know, we're not trying to continuously occupy a receptor or inhibit an enzyme. We're trying to get rid of a cell type and once it's gone, it's gone. We don't need the drug around anymore. We need a peak level for you know, a matter of um, you know, a couple of hours and then we want the drug gone. So that, that's part of the reason we pick them. Desatinib is normally given for leukemias and lymphomas at the same dose every day. It's given every day to those people as we give once a month maybe or, or twice a month for a senolytic effect. So you know, we're, we're giving, and, and we know the safety profile of desatinib, and we know it's generally, it's not a typical chemotherapy drug. It doesn't act the way that typical chemotherapy drugs do. It acts by inhibiting um, enzymes that are on these pathways that allow cells to survive that are producing bad things. So it doesn't work the way that a typical chemotherapy drug does. And then quercetin is a flavonoid. It's a natural product. It, it's got a lot of things that it acts on, but it acts on these nodes. And again, it's gone once we get rid of it. Fazetin is closely related to carcetin. It's got a shorter elimination half-life around three hours. So it's gone within 10 hours. It's in strawberries and uh, cucumbers and a whole lot of other things. Um, and again, we know um, uh, something about its safety profile. Um, we elected, because it's got a short elimination half-life, and it, it appears in preclinical studies and also in what we know from about people consuming it, uh, that it, it doesn't seem to have um, a lot of side effects. And so we elected to use it as, in, in, as, uh, on its own as a, a second strategy for certain kinds of indications in early phase clinical trials. Mm. We're interested in a hit and run approach. We wanna get rid of these cells and we want the drug to be gone. So the the um you know the usual rules about um pharmacokinetics go out the window and um what we really want to know and and these drugs um intestinal uh, absorption is variable as with any kind of drug uh, but you know what that's why in in the trials what we want to do is give a dose we know um in preclinical studies is sufficient to kill senescent cells but is below, way below the toxicity threshold for that drug. So the Alzheimer's trial is uh, mainly a safety and feasibility trial. It's open label. It's looking at subjects for a few months before versus after starting intermittent senolytics. And this is in subjects with early but established Alzheimer's disease. Uh, and the, the purpose of this particular phase of the Alzheimer's studies is to know how big uh, a placebo controlled trial is going to have to be. Uh, so th this involves subjects who are over 65. It's just beginning to enroll. Uh, they've got intermediate Alzheimer's diseases uh, uh, evident by um, 
uh, cognitive function testing and looking at various markers, including uh, PET imaging. Um, it's going to be a small trial. It's mainly looking at target engagement, as I mentioned, and it's going to be of intermittent uh, dasatinib and carcetin. And this is based on uh, studies in animal models where there appeared to be some alleviation of the, of the Alzheimer's-like state that some mouse models have, um, where we find that there are senescent cells in the parts of the brain that control memory and executive function, uh, and that uh, senolytics in those animal models improve new nerve uh, production, uh, reduce inflammation in the brain, Im improve blood flow in the brain, and decrease or even partially reverse brain shrinkage. So we're seeing if that's true in patients with Alzheimer's. In patients with Alzheimer's, we know they have senescent cells in the hippocampi of the brain and the frontal lobes that control respectively uh, memory and cognitive function. Uh, there's a trial which is just beginning. Um, it's going to be in, uh, when it's fully rolled out in 129 nursing homes across the United States, it's funded by the NIH. And this will be for uh, patients who ha have, uh, who test positive or have tested positive for coronavirus who are nursing home residents. We know that they have, uh, that they don't do very well. So this trial is uh, beginning in a small way at Mayo affiliated nursing homes, then it's gonna spread across the translational geroscience network. 